July 1998, a date famously known in the Resident Evil universe as a date filled with tragedy. The fateful evening when Raccoon City Star's Alpha Team, led by Captain Albert Wesker, traveled into the nightmare-inducing hallways of the Spencer Mansion and discovered secrets that would change the course of their lives forever. But the story of the Star's Team arrival at the Spencer Mansion begins before Alpha Team even arrived, with the ill-fated members of Bravo Team. While Alpha Team had the most cowardly Star's member, Brad Vickers, Bravo Team employed one of the most courageous. Richard Aiken. This video will focus mainly on Richard's background, his journey throughout the Spencer Mansion, and the heroic actions that led to his downfall. We're going to take bits and pieces of the character's appearances to paint a detailed picture of the bravery that he represents. Before we begin, I'd like to go ahead and introduce my Patreon page. If you'd like to support the channel and allow me to continue creating content like this for all time, you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month by clicking on the link in the description or heading over to patreon.com forward slash gamerthumbtv. And for their continued support, I'd also like to thank my current patrons and channel members listed in the description. As a member of the Star's Bravo team, Richard Aiken served the role of communications expert, skilled in using technology to keep contact with Star's headquarters on dangerous missions, alongside his customized assault shotgun. Before joining Star's in Raccoon City, Richard suffered a tremendous tragedy in his life that shaped the man that he would become. When he was younger, his sister was attacked by a violent armed criminal, and during the encounter, she was murdered right in front of him. At the time, he was too paralyzed by fear to do anything to stop it, and for years, he carried the intense guilt of his failure to protect her. He believed he should have died in her place, and this caused a strong desire from inside of him to spend the rest of his days protecting others. He successfully joined the Raccoon City Police Department and passed all qualifications necessary to be recruited into the Star's Bravo team. Richard was beloved by his team members, and he became close with the new recruit, Rebecca Chambers, who he called Becky. He saw her almost as a younger sister figure, reminding him of his own, and supported her as she adjusted to her new role as Bravo Team's medical expert. And in 1998, a series of murders began happening in Arclay County, and attackers were being reported in the nearby Arclay Mountains. The Umbrella Corporation had lost control of its secret T-virus, and an attack orchestrated by the monstrous Queen Leech allowed it to leak from the underground lab by the Spencer Mansion and local executives training school. With the outbreak slowly spreading in the area, Wesker took the opportunity to concoct a plan to lead the Stars teams into the area. He wanted to test the bioweapons that were unleashed against worthy prey, and he had his own selfish plans behind the scenes while posing as the stern captain of Stars Alpha Team. Bravo Team was tasked as the first team to go into the Arclay Mountains and investigate why the murders were happening, but Wesker quietly sabotaged their helicopter, ensuring that they would fly into a terrible fate. Before leaving, Richard wrote a letter to his girlfriend Bridget, promising that he would return to her. His letter reads, Bridget, I understand your concerns about me taking up this dangerous line of work. As a member of STARS, I will always be in the line of fire. I figured this was as good a time as any to try and explain my actions. I know I've talked about her before, but the memory of my little sister eats at me from inside. I couldn't save her from that criminal. I know you tried to console me, telling me that there was nothing I could do being so young, but I was so paralyzed by fear and doubt that I couldn't do anything. My baby sister was killed right in front of my very eyes, and I couldn't move an inch. I couldn't protect her. I was helpless. It feels like I should have died in her place, and I just can't shake that feeling. All I can do is try to bury that feeling and protect the people that need it most, so they don't have to go through what I did. I'm not giving up this job, and I will continue to protect who I can. Stars is the only way I can live with myself. I don't want to die in vain. I never want to hesitate when that moment comes again. Don't worry. I'm not that little kid anymore, and I'll come back alive. I promise. You're the most important thing in my life, and I always want to be there for you when you need me. Love, Richard. In the late hours of the night, in July 1998, Richard and Bravo team departed to begin the investigation and the helicopter crashed into the forest below, a forest filled with Umbrella's monsters. Through the evening, Bravo team scattered and were being slaughtered by Umbrella's creatures one by one. Rebecca survived alongside an escaped prisoner, Billy Cohen, and faced the Queen Leech, before destroying the executive training school. While Rebecca had her own struggles, Richard became separated from the rest of the squad and found his way to the Spencer Mansion, alone and terrified. He yelled into his communicator in a panic trying to get a message back to Wesker at Star's headquarters, but help would not come. 
While trying to call in, he was being quickly surrounded by the undead creatures inside, and then he realized that the cord connecting the device was damaged. He had to get to a safe place quickly so he can repair it and reach his teammates, but he had to keep moving to keep the monsters away. And the Spencer Mansion was filled with deadly traps meant to destroy intruders. Richard accidentally activated one of them, sending a deadly gas into the room he was in. He can hear movement all around him, but couldn't see due to the thick vapor. Called out for Becky, thinking that Rebecca might have survived, but received no answer, and ran into a downstairs room where a terrifying bioweapon waited for him, the Yawn, a snake that was infected with the T-Virus and grew to an extreme size. The snake caught his scent and hungered for its prey. Back at Star's headquarters, Wesker was on the phone with an Umbrella Corporation agent named Holden. Holden demanded to know that Wesker was keeping their experiment secret, and Wesker reported back on his sabotage of Bravo Team's chopper. As he finished the phone call, Barry Burton of Alpha Team walked in and asked about Bravo Team. All communication with them was lost, and Wesker pretended to be concerned about their fate. He told Barry it was time to assemble Alpha Team to follow Bravo Team's trail. And Wesker kicked the door down to Alpha's headquarters. They had to prepare and move out immediately. In Wesker's mind, everything was going according to plan. Bravo Team was surely destroyed by now, and Alpha Team would be next. The members of Alpha were ready quickly and followed Captain Wesker's orders without question, but suspicions were already being formed in Jill Valentine's mind. Could it be possible that Wesker knew more than he let on? She questioned his decision to bring rocket launchers on the mission, especially since they supposedly had no idea what was out in the forest, what could possibly require that level of firepower, and Wesker stressed that they had to be ready for the worst. Jill discussed her suspicions with the rest of the team, and Barry tried putting her concerns to rest a man that was himself a victim of Wesker's plot. The cowardly pilot Brad Vickers started up the chopper, and Chris Redfield and his team left to find Bravo, beginning their own evening of terror in the Spencer Mansion. After they landed, they were immediately attacked by Cerberus dogs and chased inside the mansion that Richard was recently in. While Alpha Team survivors explored the mansion, Rebecca hid inside the nearby guardhouse residence after splitting ways with Billy, thinking that she could regroup with the remaining Bravo members. Richard had escaped the yawn and found an exhausted Rebecca. Richard? You're okay? I'm fine. We were fighting some monster, and... Edward's dead. I see. It's not much better on my end, either. We got attacked by those things, and had to split up. The rest of the team is either in hiding, or... or... We just have to find Enrico. He'll know what to do. <laughs> what a horrible first assignment, huh? First, we have to get to someplace safe. Richard was relieved to see Rebecca alive and well, and they both agreed that they had to find a safer location. He knew the mansion was also filled with creatures, but believed it was easier to mount a defense inside a secure building. Together, they made it back to the mansion and witnessed an umbrella officer, Sergei Vladimir, securing some of the company's most important assets. While Sergei reached safety, Richard and Rebecca wouldn't be so lucky. The yawn had picked up Richard's trail and had desperately wanted the prey that escaped it previously. Are you alright? Probably just us now. Help will come. I'm sure our captain is out there somewhere. So don't give up hope. Besides, I'll back you up. <laughs> and with me around, what could go wrong? Yawn was relentless, however. After a violent chase through the Spencer Mansion, it found them again, cornered in the library, and Richard would lose everything to keep Rebecca safe. Rebecca! Ah! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I messed up good. Some backup I made. <laughs> Richard. Don't make that face at me. <laughs> We've still gotta have hope. Someone will come and rescue us. I I know it. Richard was slowly dying from the snake's venom, and Rebecca sat by his side trying to do whatever she could to keep him comfortable and alive. She carried him to a different hallway where they were found by Alpha Team. From here, multiple versions of Richard's fate exists, depending on player choices and actions. A serum existed that could save Richard's life, but even with the serum, his fate was sealed in the original version of Resident Evil. Oh, chill. This house is dangerous. There are terrible demons. Ouch! You're wounded! What kind of demon attacked you? It was a huge snake, and also poisonous. Ugh. Poisonous? Oh no. Richard, hold on! There is serum. Oh no, I should have brought some with me. No problem. I'll go and get it. Thanks. Here's the serum! Richard, hold on. I'll give you a shot now. Jill, here's my radio. You should keep it. I'm... No! Richard! Jill, be careful. Uh, uh. He can expire in the same way in the remade version of Resident Evil, but if the serum is found in time, his life could be saved. Hope this is what you wanted. Thank you. I'm gonna give you a shot now, Richard. Hang in there. Here. Take it. It's a radio. Take care of yourself, Rebecca. Richard! He's okay. He's just unconscious. As the serum cleared out the venom and healed him, Richard would remain temporarily bedridden, and Rebecca stayed and watched over him as he slowly recovered. His fate after surviving ultimately depended on who rescued him. If he survives through Jill Valentine's story, he heroically saves her life and puts himself in danger against the Yawn for the final time. Thanks. And if Chris Redfield saves him, Richard suffers an equally tragic Richard. end after Chris enters Umbrella's Aqua Ring, the chamber where they kept Chris. their Neptune experiment. Chris, stop! No! Richard. No matter what decision is made, Richard Aiken was destined to die in the Spencer Mansion. Thanks to his sacrifice, his fellow team members were able to continue forward, destroy the facility, and escape with their lives. Unfortunately, Richard couldn't keep the promise that he stated in his letter. He left behind his girlfriend Bridget and teammates that would continue to fight on in his memory for years to come. Since you made it to the end of this video, I assume you enjoyed it, so why don't you go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, links in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.